Hello! This video is for those of you who want long wearing lip color but without the dryness. We're going to see if any of these drugstore two step long wearing lip products are possible dupes for the Chanel La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenu Ultra Wear Liquid Lip Colors. That is a long name. These have this miraculous ability to wear perfectly for a super long time without drying out your lips. And I've been asked if there might be any drugstore dupes or if some of these are very similar. I've been testing them out. So we're going to talk about these, compare these today, and see if I think any of these are kind of close to the Chanel. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. I would love it if you would consider hitting that subscribe button before the end of this video. All right, let's go ahead and get into the comparisons of these long wearing lip colors and see if there is a dupe in this bunch. So for each of these, I'm going to tell you the price, the amount of product that you get, how they all feel and apply and wear, and the directions for each because that makes a difference. And of course, how they compare to the original, the gold standard, the Chanel product. The idea for all of these is to give you long wearing lip color without the dryness. Now, whether they all accomplish that is another story, which we will talk about. In general, for these two step products, for that first layer, you want to apply an even thin layer to clean dry lips. And you don't want to blot or press your lips together for a specified amount of time. And the time is going to vary by brand, but it's important to note what that time frame is because it, it does matter. Matter. And then you're going to go in and you're going to apply your top coat. And that top coat is not just there to moisturize, it's there to seal in the color. And you can apply it as you need it throughout the day to hydrate, to help seal it in. And I've been asked before if you can not use the top coat. I wouldn't recommend it because it can affect how the lip color just wears throughout the day. You pretty much do need the top coat. Now to remove these at the end of the day, you're going to need an oil-based makeup remover. I mean, these are long wearing. They are meant to last on the lips, but I am going to tell you about the Chanel first because it's it's the basis for this video. It's kind of the gold standard of this whole thing. Okay, so let's first talk about the Chanel. The Chanel La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenu Lip Color is $38. You get 0.26 ounces of product in total. The lip color itself is 0.15 ounces and the gloss top coat is 0.11 ounces. It claims to give you ultra saturated color that applies smoothly and dries quickly without feathering. You can apply one single layer even with the reds. The glossy top coat delivers comfortable, brilliant shine and superb hydration. They say to apply an even layer, allow a moment to dry and apply a top coat. I want to show you really quickly what they mean by saturation of color and being able to apply one thin coat evenly. I have on the shade Daring Red today and I find that even as the color gets very, very thin and almost dry feeling on the wand, I do not get thinning of the product on my lips. It's pretty interesting the way that happens. I also find this applies very, very easily even around the lip line. A lot of liquid lip products get kind of gloppy around the lip line and force me to use a lip liner. These don't, which is kind of a miracle for me. So I wanted to show you that and then I'm going to morph into my application on the day I wore Timeless Beige to show you the full application, which again applies super evenly and easily. Now they say to wait a moment, <laughs> which is, you know, not really defined, right? So I wait several seconds until my lips feel like they're kind of sticking together. You just feel them kind of dry yet sticking together. And then I go in with the gloss, the top coat. This top coat doesn't feel oily or goopy or like a gloss. It kind of morphs the feeling on your lips into a creamy lipstick. That's what it feels like. Now you can leave your lips very shiny after you apply the gloss or you can blot it a little bit and take that shine down and your lips still feel nice and creamy. Now as far as color transfer on cups and things like that, at the most I get balm transfer. I just don't get color transfer. My lips don't appear or feel dry during the day, even as the gloss, the top coat wears away and my lip lines don't appear to be emphasized. I have had this, not this, this lip color on through two videos now and through drinking and through a meal. I have not reapplied the balm. I still see a little bit of a sheen to my lips. It's not totally matte and 
my lips are drier than they were, but they're not uncomfortable. When I wear any one of the colors that I have, and I'll list all the colors and all the products down below for all of these in my description box, you can get to that by clicking on the title. If you're on mobile and you'll get the drop down description box, if you're on desktop and you look underneath the video, you'll see the title and a little summary paragraph and you'll see the words show more. Just click on show more and you'll get the drop down. The color just lasts on the lips all day long through eating, drinking, and talking. It stays flattering and comfortable even if the gloss wears away like the dryness is not uncomfortable and if I do reapply the gloss it kind of revamps the color if it happened to you know just get a little dull looking but there's never anything ungraceful going on there's never any lines of demarcation any flaking or anything it's just a beautiful beautiful product and it's not drying to say that it's not drying <laughs> so that is very important to note. There's a lot of things in here that are very important to remember as we move forward with other products and you, you may want to rewind later as we move forward with other products. The first product I'm going to talk about is Rimmel Provocalypse 16 Hour Kiss Proof Color. This retails for $6.99 and you get 0.24 ounces of product. The shade that I have is called Wish Upon a Berry and the lip color itself has 0.14 ounces of product and the gloss top coat has 0.1 ounces of product. This claims to give you up to 16 hours of high impact endless color. It's kiss proof, transfer proof, and leaves your lips feeling smooth and moisturized all day long. It says to apply it to your lips, let it dry for 60 seconds, and then top it with the gloss. There are two things that I noticed right away about this product. The first is that I really like the shade. It's a cool tone pink that doesn't read as too pinky, but it also has kind of a chemical taste and scent, which kind of bothered me. Now, because so much product comes out on the wand with this, I had kind of a hard time staying in the lines with this. I really had to scrape the wand off to get the right amount of product. I also noticed that after I applied the gloss, my lips felt more oily and waxy, kind of like there was a film on them versus creamy. Now with each of the lipsticks, I kissed the back of my hand just to see if I would get any transfer right away. And this failed that test. I did get some transfer right away, even though I waited a little bit over the amount of time between applying the color and the gloss. So I blotted and then I topped it again with the gloss and it failed again. So I did try this on another day and I let the lip color dry even longer and it did pass that kiss test, but my lips appeared drier. Like I could see more of my lip lines. So that's just kind of a, a side note on that. Now I didn't get too much transfer on my cups during the day. I do feel like the gloss kind of wore away pretty quickly though. And once it wore away, my lips felt slightly sticky and a little bit dry and my lines were a little bit more emphasized. And after about three or four hours of wear, I had a significant line of demarcation where my lips meet. Now I did apply the gloss on top just as I would normally do to resolve you know, the dryness. And the gloss applied on top nicely, but that line still showed. I was kind of wondering if it was gonna blur that line, but it really didn't. At the end of the day, there was a slight stain still left on my lips. My lips didn't feel super uncomfortable, but they just didn't really look that great. So this in terms of longevity and feel and of course the you know chemical taste and scent by the way there is none with the Chanel I would just say this is not comparable in my opinion at all. Now let's move on to the CoverGirl Outlast two-step lip color. This retails for $10.99 for 0.13 ounces. The lip color is 0.07 ounces and the balm top coat is 0.06 ounces. I have the shade 930 medium warm. The claims on this are that it blends easily and it gives comfortable wear with a moisturizing feel for up to 24 hours. The two-step top coat is now formulated with sunflower seed oil for a comfortable wear and a moisturizing feel and you're supposed to apply an even layer let it dry for 60 seconds and apply the top coat I immediately noticed this had a slightly sweet scent and taste to it that was you know kind of pleasant I, I kind of liked it I really liked this shade it wasn't super lip line friendly if you you know are concerned with your vertical lip lines it, you know it didn't really smooth my lips but it wasn't terrible either the feel is initially creamy it's not oily it's not waxy now when I kissed the back of my 
my hand with this. I did it after about 45 minutes. I think this was the first one that I tested and it did leave some crumbles with it. And when I pressed my lips back together, they felt kind of gritty, which was really strange. So I tried to wipe those gritty particles off with my finger and I topped it off with the balm again and I could still feel those kind of gritty sandy particles. And so I just, you know, tried to and just moved on. I did get some transfer onto my cup after about an hour and at around midday it had faded quite a bit from my lips. Now I reapplied on another day and another day and I kept getting that grittiness feeling, that kind of sand-like feeling. I don't know why that is. I waited some extra time and I just keep getting that feeling and it's not super great on my lip lines. I also noticed that after I drink or you know do anything where my lips are touching something else a lot of the creaminess and moisture does go away. So I feel like to keep that creaminess and moisture you really do have to apply the balm quite frequently and you know these balms are interchangeable. It's not like you can just pull a balm out of your purse and use it with this. There's a kind of chemistry that, that you have to have between the two products. So you would have to use this specific balm and I feel like you would just go through it really quickly. So I was not really thrilled with this product either. And I wanted to be because I really like this color. So that was kind of a disappointment. This is the Revlon Color Stay Over Time. It's $10.99 for 0.14 ounces. You'll notice that the last one and this one have almost half of what the Chanel product has in it as well. So the lip color portion is 0.07 ounces and the gloss top coat is also 0.07 ounces. The shade that I have is called Bare Maximum. The claims are that it gives you color and shine for up to 16 hours without touch-ups. It has soft flex for a beautiful comfortable color that won't kiss off, feather, or bleed. And it has a moisturizing top coat with chamomile and soy extract for all day glossy softness. You're supposed to apply it to your clean lips, let dry. It does not specify a time and top with the gloss. So this shade is actually a deeper neutral. It's not the same as the outer packaging. This is just kind of an opaque color that's supposed to match, but it really doesn't. When I did the kiss test, there was no transfer, no scent or taste. It felt really good on the lips, kind of a thinner, creamy consistency. This was very promising with transfer. There was no noticeable transfer on my cups. I forgot to get footage of this that day, but that is what happened. However, after a couple of hours of talking and drinking, I got this weird white line where my lips met. So I rubbed it off and I reapplied the gloss. I mean, it wiped off okay. I I just would hate to be caught somewhere where that happened and I didn't realize it. It did fade very, very gracefully throughout the day, which I really liked. Now, in order for my lips to feel good and moisturized, I did have to apply the gloss pretty frequently. If I failed to do that, my lips did start to feel dry. And despite the gloss reapplication, I did feel like my lip lines were a little bit emphasized, but I did like this product better than the CoverGirl and better than the Rimmel overall. I just needed a lot more gloss application than with the Chanel and it wasn't as lip line friendly, as, as smoothing as, as the Chanel either, but it's the best of the drugstore options so far. Now we have the Maybelline Superstay 24 color. This is $10.99 for 0.14 ounces. The lip color itself is 0.077 ounces and the balm top coat is 0.063 ounces. I have the shade 0.035 Keep It Red. This claims to give you all high impact lip color. It has a micro flex formula that glides on and moves with you all day. It doesn't flake, doesn't cake, doesn't fade or dry the lip and it gives you comfortable transfer proof wear. You are supposed to apply this to clean lips and let it dry for two minutes and apply the Color Seal Balm. I loved this red shade. I really thought it was super, super pretty. Now, the first day that I applied this, I did apply a thin layer of lip liner because of the lip line. I couldn't get this on evenly without doing that. I can do that with the Chanel and I don't have a problem. So I assumed that it wouldn't be a problem with this either. When I kissed my hand, there was no color, which was promising. There's also no center taste with this. It feels kind of like a cross between a balm and a cream lipstick. Now I did get some particle transfer onto cups after about 30 minutes, but my lips still looked good. So I, I don't really care about transfer as long as it doesn't affect the way my lips look. Now about two and a half hours after eating and drinking, my lips started to look a little rough. I had a 
really exaggerated line of demarcation where my lips meet. I had fading around the outside of my lips and I had some exaggerated vertical lip lines and my lips just felt somewhat dry. I obviously could fix the dryness with the balm, but that would not fix the, the fading and the demarcation line. So I decided to try this on another day and not use the lip liner. Now to get opaque color, I did have to apply two layers in a lot of spots because it was just kind of sheer giving off a, a little bit of pinkness instead of that that solid coat because I didn't have that lip liner on. So it doesn't give that same saturated color with one thin coat like the Chanel. And I had to just go in really slowly to get an accurate lip line <laughs> with this. And I let it dry a little bit longer than two minutes. I went close to three minutes, which is a long time to sit there with your lips like, that. Now I did get some transfer onto cups and things, but it didn't really affect how the lipstick looked on my lips. Every now and then I would get some little flakes that would flake off. I think that's because it was layered, but again, it didn't really affect how the lipstick looked. I did get dry a few times during the day and reapplied the balm and I did get kind of a gritty feeling, which I'm realizing now I think is the balm kind of picking up some of the flakes of the product that I just couldn't pick up with the naked eye. I'm wondering if that's what happened with the CoverGirl product too. And I just kind of rolled them off with my finger and then reapplied the balm and it seemed to, to fix the problem. But yeah, I ended up liking this once, you know, I kind of managed it a little bit better. It did feel a little bit drying at certain points during the day. And I just, you know, had to apply balm more frequently than I do with the Chanel. But overall, this was a pretty decent option with a little more maintenance. Now we have the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Last Lip Color. This is 12 99 for 0.17 ounces. The lip color is 0.1 ounces and the balm top coat is 0.07 ounces. I have the shade 201 Everlasting Caramel. Looks a little bit more pink to me than caramel. That's just me. So this claims to have high intensity color, glide on easily, and give you a moisturizing feel that won't dry out and last up to 24 hours, and you are supposed to have no need to reapply. You apply to clean lips, let dry two minutes, apply the color seal balm. This also has a sweet scent to it, kind of a nostalgic scent. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I didn't really notice a taste to it. So it was really just that light nostalgic scent. I really like the shade of this as well. And this is very lip line friendly. I didn't have any issues with it around my lip line. It was very easy to apply. I immediately thought this was going to be my favorite after application because it just felt very creamy and had kind of a slip to it. When I did the kiss test, there there was no color. Now I did have some particle transfer onto a cup after about an hour, but my lips still looked and felt great. Now, four hours later, after a very messy kind of greasy lunch, I did have a little bit of demarcation where my lips meet, but my lips still felt good and the pigment was still there. Now about five hours in, my coffee cup had some remnants on it, but it wasn't really affecting how my lips looked or felt. So now we're at nine hours. I've had a long day of filming, eating, drinking. It's faded to a stain and my lines are emphasized a little bit more, but my lips don't feel overly dry. They still feel kind of creamy, kind of moisturized. And so this is the first time that I reapplied the balm. I was just so busy this day. I didn't even think about it and it seemed to help it look better, but not as as perfect as it did before, but I was actually pretty impressed with this one. I do also want to just very briefly mention lip scents by Cinegents because some of you have brought that up to me. So it's $25 for 0.25 ounces for the color. You also have to buy the gloss for $20 for 0.25 ounces. You also have to buy the remover that is $10 for 0.25 ounces. The first ingredient in that product is alcohol. Despite what they say about it not being drying, it is very very drying on your lips. And you're supposed to apply three layers of the lip color and it is bulletproof, but you're gonna get some major lip dry out. Now I would say that my favorites out of all of these are the L'Oreal or the Maybelline. You would need to buy two of these to get the same amount that you get in the Chanel. Now I wouldn't say any of them are true dupes, but there are some that, you know, you could absolutely get for less money. You would have to get a couple of them though to get the amount that you get in the Chanel because you actually get more amount in that price product and the quality of the product and how it wears and how it looks and how it feels is actually 
really worth the money, in my opinion, if you have that in your budget. But I know not everybody does. So that's why I wanted to do this video to at least give you my experience with the drugstore options that are out there and to let you know there are a couple of good ones out of the ones that I've tried. But I would love to know your experiences with any of these. I know everybody's experience is different with different products. If you missed my latest foundation roundup where I tested the latest foundations that I've tried and let you know how they work for me, I will link that here for you. If you're not subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and become part of the family. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!